Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, really quick uh, video here for you today. I wanted to talk about something that uh, came up just the other day. I was talking, I think it was on Facebook, with the uh, manufacturer of uh, another uh, card and dice baseball game. It looked pretty interesting, actually. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but um, apparently involves some sort of pitch by pitch type mechanism for a board game, which is something you don't see every single day. Um, and I was looking sort of at the availability that uh, they had there for uh, this game and for its uh, seasons and parts and stuff like that. I noticed a couple of things. For example, the fact that um, there there were not a lot of individual seasons available. I think you could get spreadsheets that had player data for entire decades as opposed to individual seasons, and that really kind of got me thinking. So, I mean, for those of you who play a lot of these games and who look at the industry and who thinks about stuff, when you're buying a game or trying something out, do you take a look and see what seasons are available and which ones aren't? I mean, I'm just thinking a lot about what I know about the history of the industry and the way that this has always worked. So back in the old days, you would see, uh, you know, uh, Jay Richard sites who would come out usually only with the most recent seasons cards. Hal Richmond did the same thing, and that was kind of the way that things went up until sometime in the early 70s when uh, people decided that it would be fun to play with older seasons and older teams, and you start to see that sort of thing uh, move around. The question I have is, I mean, is that absolutely necessary? Would it be possible for a game to come up today and actually get attention only featuring most recent season players? Um, something I've been thinking about for a while, I think that we've seen a lot of change in the industry over time. And frankly, I think that it's very, very difficult for games to compete if they don't offer a certain um, catalog of past seasons. In fact, I would go as far as to say that if you don't offer basically the full complement of seasons from at least the 1960s, maybe early 70s, and probably a good chunk of the 50s too, you're going to have a hard time getting many customers. And that's because that's where most of your potential customer base, um, that's what they remember. That's kind of what they grew up with, right? Maybe the case of the 50s might be going back a little bit too far, but I think it's still definitely the case with the 60s. In fact, for a while, when I was doing my own research into the industry um, a couple years ago and looking at sort of what was around, I noticed that just about every single uh, game off offered at least a 1969 uh, set of uh, uh, playing cards or cards representing players from that season, or if it's a computer game, a disc. And the reason why is because um, that's one of those seasons that are very, very popular among people who um, enjoy playing these games. I think less because of what happened that season and a little bit more because of that's, you know, when they were kids, that's the season they remember and have a lot of nostalgia for. So I'd be interested to sort of know what you think about that. If you think that it's possible to have a game that is successful without offering a lot of these past seasons, or if it's absolutely necessary that past seasons like that have to be offered. Another thing that I'll, I will note is that even if you're making a card and dice game, it's going to be difficult for you to compete these days right out of the box because whatever you're charging for the game has to compete against like Digital Diamond Baseball or, or OOTP. Digital Diamond Baseball, as I recall, offers a huge um, collection of seasons for free. OTP offers every single season in baseball history for free. Now, there are some problems, at least with OTP. I don't know as much about Digital Diamond Baseball, but I know that with OTP, if you play with any 19th century seasons, you're going to get inaccurate results because the uh, leagues are not even set up correctly. It can't handle major leagues that have um, three different leagues, let alone four. And there's all sorts of just really stupid problems with the way that the game's programmed that um, prevent it from really doing an accurate replay of certain past seasons, right? Problems that you don't get if you're playing with cards and dice and just doing the stats yourself. But it still is something to consider, which is that if uh, you're trying to make your money off of selling past seasons, you really need to have a game that offers access to as many past seasons as possible out of the box. At least that's where it seems that the industry is. Part of this discussion was, you know, well, what can you do when the uh, big players on the scene are, are companies like Apple and Stratomatic? Now, I don't think the Stratomatic has carded every single season of baseball history, but I know that APA has. That makes it pretty difficult, right? And I think that there's a little bit of an argument that can be made for um, having a somewhat simplified game design so you can quickly generate the uh, ratings necessary to uh, make as many past seasons as you possibly can. Because I'm going to tell you what, if I'm looking at your game and all you have is like, you know, a World Series matchup from last year and maybe a couple all-star teams and that's it, and it's sort of a proof of concept type thing, like, I'm probably not going to buy anything from you because I'm looking at that thinking this isn't going to last long. Um, so uh, it's a difficult, difficult proposition to come up with. I think that it's very, very difficult, especially for guys who are just trying to get started, who might have a good idea and who are trying to make something happen because you kind of have to hit the ground running. And uh, the competition is pretty strong and pretty fierce. Now, 
And so you know, I'm not saying that the competition is insurmountable. I actually personally believe that you can do a lot to overcome the lead that App and Strat have because they're not attracting new young players at all. Replay might be a little bit more difficult and is probably the better game among those three. Um, but even still, you know, if you were able to figure out how to get your uh, uh, costs of production down, especially the time costs, you might be able to have some success and might be able to uh, pull out ahead of them pretty quickly if you can get some momentum behind you. And as I said before, as nice as a game like OTP or Action PC Baseball looks, I do think that there are a lot of weaknesses in games like that that can also be overcome. Love to know what your thoughts are. Let me know down below, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. Talk to you later. Bye.